Hey church, LBC Bite Size today, we're looking at the word access. We're going into the Old Testament, look at the Holy of Holies and the veil that covered um, the holy place from the Holy of Holies. Then we go into the New Testament to see Jesus, his death, and the veil was torn, allowing man and woman access to God. So, straining to the Old Testament, we look at the tabernacle and we see there's like a portable sanctuary until the building of the temple in Jerusalem. We see an outer courtroom, then goes on to the holy place, then there's a veil, a big curtain that separates you from the holy place to the holy of holies. Once a year, a priest would go inside the holy of holies to offer a sacrifice to God for the sins of the people. Now, only once a year this would take place, and only the high priest could go in there. It wasn't a place where anybody could go in. That's why the veil was there, to stop, if you like, sinful man seeing an awesome God. And so even the priest, as he goes in, he's got to go through a certain way. He has to clean himself in a certain way. He has to put on special clothes. He also has to create a cloud in the Holy of Holies to stop him seeing the divine presence of God. We see this in Leviticus chapter 16, verse 13. And it says, And he shall put the incense on the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat, that is, on the testimony, lest he die. Like, you can't just go in there just happily, jolly, this, that, and the other. You couldn't just walk in the Holy of Holies. That's the divine presence where God is. A holy God cannot meet with the sinful people. And so uh, the priest would go in there, uh, sacrifice once a year on the Day of Atonement. Now, on this special clothing that he wore, he would have bells attached to the bottom of his garments. While the bells were still ringing out, the people outside knew the priest was still alive. Now it says, and I say it says, it says in Jewish literature and ancient writings, it says that a priest would have a rope tied around his belly or around his ankle. And if the bells stopped for an amount of time, they would then drag him out because it could mean that he has died. Now, because nobody could go in the Holy of Holies, um, you wasn't allowed to just go in the Holy of Holies. You would die for going in there. Only the priest could go in once a year with blood and incense um, is what he took in with him. And so I can't say the Bible says a rope is tied around the priest in case he dies and they pull him out. Uh, but old Jewish writings say that. And it makes an awful lot of sense that that is a practice that took place. Now, if we go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 3 to 4, you will see well, what the New Testament says on this. It says, but in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. Obviously. Verse 4 says, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats, goats take away sins. We need the ultimate sacrifice. We need Jesus to come and pay the ultimate penalty. We need sinless blood. We need the blood of Jesus, which is the only blood that can wash away the sins of the people. A one-time sacrifice, where in the Old Testament, they've got to go over and over the same religious process. But when Jesus comes, he's going to come and do it once and for all. Now notice that sacrifices have been taking place from the day of Adam. Now Adam and Eve, they sinned. They realized they were naked and they were like, oh no, we're naked. This is after the fall, after they've eaten of the fruit. Uh, God comes giving them a dressing down. They, they know they are sinned because all of a sudden they can see their nakedness, their shame and their guilt. And it says in chapter 3 verse 21 of Genesis, also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. The Lord God basically sacrificed an animal and clothes them, covers them. You see, sacrifices to cover the shame and guilt, the sin of the people. In Genesis 22, Abraham and Isaac, you know the story on Mount Moriah, Isaac is about to be sacrificed by Abraham. 
But at the last moment, uh, it's put to a stop where God provides a lamb um, caught in a thorn bush, which is a great picture of Jesus as we know to be the lamb of God with a crown of thorns upon his head. You see, it's a picture to be played out later on in the years to come. Isaiah 59 verse 2, it says, Your iniquities have separated you from God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Like we need Jesus desperately. Like let's fast forward to Jesus because without him, without him, we'd be needing a priest to go in to the Holy of Holies, uh, sacrifice animals. We'd, we'd never get to enter the throne room of God. We'd never get to go before God with a confidence and torture him. That's why you don't need any man or any woman to forgive you, if you like, of your sin. You don't need to confess your sins to them for them to send it up to heaven. You don't need that. You can go directly to God because what Jesus has done for you. If we go to Hebrews 10 verse 11, it says, and every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. And so it's what the Hebrew, the person in Hebrew is saying, in the book of Hebrews, sorry, he's saying, he's saying, look, the priests, they do the same thing religiously every year and it can never take away ultimately the sins. It's just kind of like... Um, it just covers you for a tiny bit. It's like it's just a pass for a bit, and we'll repeat it next year, and then we'll repeat it again, and we'll repeat it again. But ultimately, it's never ever taking away the sins of the people. Well, thankfully, John the Baptist is in the book of John. And John chapter 1, verse 29, John the Baptist is baptizing people when all of a sudden he sees Jesus and he says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. It's like this guy is the ultimate sacrifice, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so we see this veil that we talked about that's separated from the holy place to the holy of holies. This veil stands between us and God and it needs to be torn. It needs to be torn. It needs to be removed. Uh, the veil, it was literally shielding a holy God, shielding a holy God from a sinful people. Or maybe you could put it the other way around. It was shielding a, a sinful people from a holy God. But God doesn't tolerate sin, okay? God doesn't tolerate sin, and his eyes, they're too pure. In Habakkuk 1 verse 13, the prophet says, You are of pure eyes, you are of pure eyes than to behold evil. And you cannot look on wickedness. You cannot look on wickedness. This is why the veil was between the Holy of Holies and the most holy place. No, sorry. This is why the veil was between the Holy of Holies and the holy place. The Holy of Holies is the most holy place. That's why you've got this separation of the veil. And this is a big, thick curtain. And it's 30 feet, 60 feet high. There's different interpretations on that. But put it this way. It's very high up. It's really high. It's thick. It's wide. And so this is to separate you from seeing into the Holy of Holies or God from seeing out and seeing you and your sin. And so this is what needs to be torn in, in a spiritual sense right now. This needs to be torn. Usually some are physical and spiritual. They kind of happen together. We'll see that in a moment as we turn to Matthew 27. I'm just going to go over to Matthew chapter 27 and verses 50 to 51. And we're going to see on the cross, we're going to see Jesus when he played the ultimate sacrifice for me and for you. Verse 50, chapter 27 of Matthew. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and he yielded his spirit. Well, as he did that, 
in verse 51 it says then behold the veil of the temple the veil that separates the holy place from the holy of holies the veil of the temple it was torn in two from top to bottom and the earth quaked and the rocks was split it was a supernatural event something physical happened but in that physical moment some spiritual some even greater happened because as Jesus died and he said it is finished he was saying look the the animal sacrifices they are finished I'm the ultimate sacrifices the wages of sin is death but the gift of God's eternal life. He himself bore our sin in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, we have been healed. God's presence now becomes accessible to all because the veil is torn physically that they see with their eyes, but spiritually it's torn. It's no longer a holy God you, your sin has stopped us from talking i can't talk with you it's now holy god and i've given you an ultimate sacrifice that ultimate sacrifice is jesus accept him follow him his blood will cover you so when i see you i no longer see you your sin but i see a child i see my son i see a daughter of the king i see the children of god God's presence now becomes accessible to all. The veil torn, illustration, Jesus' body opening the way as that was torn. As Jesus' body is torn, it opens up the way for us to God. Let's get a few more scriptures in before I leave you because my time is running out. Hebrews 11, no, Hebrews 6, verse 19 to 20. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Again, let's go to Hebrews 10 now. Hebrews 10, verse 19 to 20. Let's look at this. And it says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest, by the blood of Jesus, the holiest of holies, by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. And let me leave you with this church, 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. And he says, and he himself is the ultimate sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Church, he's the great I am. Back in the Old Testament, they would sacrifice once a year in the Holy of Holies to take away the sins of the people. And they would continue to do that year after year after year. But then as John the Baptist said, look, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He died once for all to do away with all the religiousness of this world all the religious ways that went before he came and he took away man's sin if we would choose to follow him that blood covers you and washes you clean that when you stand before God he no longer looks at you as a sinful man or sinful woman but he would look at you as a child of the most high to God be the glory bless you church see you in the week amen